Dobrodan, guardians. I am Croatia Dias. What I have for you today in the- What are you smiling at me for? <laughs> what I have for you today in this video is Textbook Competitive Tips and Strategies. A lot of you will know this, but it seems like a lot of people don't. Right, Mia? So these are, these are really basic textbook strategies that you should use in competitive if you're like playing if you're if you're going for it if you're if you're in a team of four or, or even if you're alone you want to be that blueberry you want to be that guy that your team can rely on or maybe you can hopefully your blue maybe hopefully the blueberry on your team watch this video and has learned these simple techniques too we can help support the team and then send them a re friend request and then send them a friend request and yeah and then you know but with these basic tips if you're fighting another team who is whose skill level is fairly on par with yours, as long as it's not a four stack of comp, as long as it's not a four stack of recos, or just people who are just legend rank happen to match you, then these tips should generally help you win. So first of all, these little clips in here are reenactments, and they're not going to be entirely accurate, but I thought it'd be kind of a fun way to show you guys a little bit what I'm talking about, versus just me talking over gameplay, or me talking while standing still. All right, so for the first tip, heavy ammo. Because heavy ammo is so prevalent in comp, it is really necessary to control it. You want to get it on your team and use it against your enemy or waste it if that's your thing, like me. So as a team, you definitely want to try and get heavy ammo and prevent or prevent the other team. If you're a solo player, try and get the heavy yourself as well if your team is not really like going for it but like take it off the map and if, if it's your full team of soul players and everybody has a mindset then it kind of works out in the end still <laughs> a high level gameplay where everybody in the team is fairly equally skilled and very competent players what determines whether you win or lose usually comes down to team shotting if you're facing enemies who are who are good and they're team shotting like you're you're not going to win those fights very often you're not going to get a nice clean 1v1 so your best bet is a team shot as a team move together and team shot if you're a solo queue, and maybe you're not the greatest, but you see someone on your team kind of performing well, you can kind of stick with them and kind of coattail them and help assist them. And then maybe maybe one of your blueberries on your team will do that for you. That if, That's if they kind of know the strategy. Is If they see you doing well, they should try and stick with you. If you're performing well on your team and they're not doing well, you can kind of type in chat and tell them, hey, follow me. Or just even shoot at them. And usually they will catch on the idea that they want that you want them to follow you. Okay, so strategy or tip number three is don't feed the enemy team, especially in survival. If you're not doing well on your team, you are not helping at all by just running in and dying. You're you're basically turning it into a 3v5. So pay attention to, if, if you're getting your ass kicked, don't go in there and keep feeding the team and making it harder for your teammates, turning it into a 3v5. Pay attention to, if, if someone's better than you, then then they're better than you and the best thing you could do is try and help your teammates by not getting killed if you ain't getting kills at least don't get killed tip number four don't use your super in a 1v7 don't try and be a hero and pop your super in a 1v7 like in 1v7 i mean like in survival where you're out of lives you're the last guardian standing all four of the enemies are alive with still with like four four lives left because you're gonna kill them Maybe you kill all four of them, but then you still gotta kill. You turn into a one v three. Your best bet is to save that super for the next round. Now, if you're up ahead and if you're up ahead and wins, or if you're up ahead in rounds, yeah, maybe you can dick around and pop your super and try, do try and do cool stuff. But like I said, this is if you're really playing to win. Now, if it is the last round and it's a one v seven, then yeah, it's acceptable to use your super, of course, because you might as well use it and do your best to try and save the game. But also, if it's like you have you have two points and he has three points and there's four of you alive and only one of them alive save your super of course play smart with your team save your super save it for the next round to guarantee to help guarantee that you win the next round so tip number five is like kind of when to use your super so if you're in your comp game and you're kind of 2-0 you're, you're up 2-0 now's the time to be really aggressive with your supers you want to pop it early be aggressive and take out the enemy team and win the rounds fast because you want to prevent your enemy from building a super that way they can't have their supers to counter your supers or ha or use theirs to win the round. And of course, like the background players just kind of just mess around, but you want to communicate with your teammates and kind of decide who's going to activate their super first. So here's a comp game I did earlier by myself. We were just blowing through this enemy team. It's the last round. I got my super. My teammate just got his. You want to be aggressive with your super and, and 
push early that way the enemy doesn't get a chance to get their super and counter yours or and then you can get a nice lead on lives and then also like if it's clash or control don't hold on to your super for the whole game try and get rid of it as fast as you can to help build orbs get quick kills and hopefully get a super again later on in the game so tip number six is like survival or even countdown if there's just one enemy left there's no need to push him one at a time unless you're absolutely confident that you can outplay this the person don't push him one at a time push him as a team or if anything this is kind of leads in tip like seven and eight which are kind of the same thing you can sit back as a team and build up your supers so if there's four of you sitting back or three of you sitting back building up your supers versus only one of them building your super like it's better like three supers versus one super now where it comes on the other end if you're the guy who's 1v4 in unless you think you can 1v4 in a situation like you have your super and they have no lives usually your best bet in like survival and even countdown is to just jump off the map because you prevent just supers from being built up okay and here's a little side tip i don't do this i don't condone this don't let me see you doing this or i'll dislike you you probably don't care but if it's clash or control and the enemy's coming with the super, you can jump off the map, okay? Just don't let me see you doing it. Basically, tip number 10. This is old school Destiny 1 trials, even D2 trials, textbook strategy. Defend the enemy's downed orbs. There's no reason. If you got two downed orbs and they're pretty close to each other, there's no reason to push the en the last two. You can sit back and build supers, or just and just stick with your team and guarantee like a four v like a a four v two fight. Like don't leave orbs undefended. Don't chase after one guy. All four of you chase after one guy, chasing his tail, not even cutting him off. He does a big old circle, runs around and revives his teammates, and then you start a chain reaction. Blah 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 blah. Sit back. Defend orbs, play enemy down orbs, play your teammate orbs, and don't push that last guy. And it's even better if you're on offense and the two down orbs are on the bomb and just sit back and defend the bomb, defend the orbs, and you guarantee the win the round win. Now here's a real basic sniffle strategy you can do is if you have a sentinel on your team and you're on offense and you got your super early as a sentinel. You can just go arm the bomb, kind of be sneaky about it. Like if you've been going down to the bottom bomb, go down to the top one on this one. And go arm the bomb, plant your bubble, and you're basically guaranteed a round away. Because they don't have supers to stop your bubble, and they're not going to be able to stop it in time before the bomb explodes. So the last one was tip 11, even though I say it. This is tip 12. This is like reviving your teammates. Always try and re revive your teammates. Don't run past an orb trying to kill an enemy. Just wait a second and revive your teammate. Even if you're in your super, like you can pop your super and then most time the enemy's gonna run from you and then you can stop and revive a teammate. As a Titan, you can throw down your barricade and revive your teammate. If you are capable of reviving your teammate while you're behind cover, don't just revive him and take off. You're gonna get him killed. Revive him and then slide out and start shooting at the enemy team to help keep your teammate alive. He'll come back. He can team shot with you. If you got other guys with you, then y'all can team shot. But in Destiny 1, it used to be you would push your teammate from a sniper, but it's different in this one. You just wanna slide out and don't, don't let your teammate get farmed. Slide out and start shooting. One other little quick tip about the reviving make sure you have your revive key on like a secondary function like i use left alt my thumb on alt reviving a teammate and my other fingers on wasd and moving and shooting doing everything is normal so you can revive and shoot at the same time same thing with console try and do that with your controller either have an elite controller mapped to that or learn to play claw or move your left thumb to your right analog quick tip 13 don't arm the bomb in a 1v4 if you're the last alive don't arm the bomb because you're just going to set yourself up for failure your best bet in a 1v4 is to try and separate them and isolate them from 1v1s if you can do that that's your best option to try and clutch that round and as the enemy team your best bet for that is just don't push them one at a time and let the timer run out build supers no need to jump up the map a bit now tip 14, this has worked for me a lot, especially like in the Kiktar tournaments that I have played in recently. This is for control. If you're playing control in comp or 4v4, so let's say you have A captured and the enemy has C and B captured. Most of the time you're gonna wanna try and cap B, right? Well, if you're sitting there throwing resources, throwing bodies at B and they're just constantly killing you and you're not 
having any success capturing B, don't sit, don't, don't keep going to B. Don't keep giving the enemy points. Your best bet is just try and plank around as a team and go for their other point, C or A, whatever it was. Now there's some control strategies for like other maps, like say, say Burnout, where you only want to capture the inside points, like A and C, and you want to leave B outside. There's strats like that, of course. Um, the reason for that is just because it's so much easier to control A and C and outside spawn such a bad spawn. Same thing with, same thing with dead cliffs. Um, I forget which point it is. The point where trucks is at. I think that's A. Like, what you want to have is C and B captured versus the A point, which is where like, the trucks are, because that's just such a horrible spawn trap that they can enemy can put you in. And you can also kind of control spawns from your enemy in this game. If you if you have if you body block spawns, you can force them to spawn somewhere. You kind of learn the spawns in this game. Or pay attention to where your team is at. Because if your team is at the back of because if you wipe the enemy team and your teammate is in the back of somewhere, the enemy is not gonna spawn there. They're gonna spawn opposite side. Okay, so tip 15, another countdown tip is if you arm the bomb, don't leave it undefended. Don't don't chase after one guy as a team. And then, as, and then leave it undefended and have one guy just come and ninja, ninja defuse it. Another thing is too, if you're if you're on top and your other three teammates are down at the bottom, don't arm the bomb at the top by yourself. You're just you're hurting your team like that. Either wait for your team or go to them or don't arm it at all. If you're just gonna hurt them. Tip number 16. Play the timer. Play the clock. This is for survival. This is for count this is for any game mode if you have the lead and there's like 30 back, seconds remaining there's absolutely no just hide. Just hide reason guardians. to push in don't push in and feed the enemy tills and make it closer this is a clip from the other night it's, it's actual in comp game where we had the lead and we were kind of pushing in a little bit but we still had the lead and still managed to play the timer and that's what we did we we just hid now, luckily, I was in a team of my friend with my friends, so I could tell everybody like sit back, and hide, don't push in. That's what we were able to do. But if you're playing by yourself, you might have those blueberries that aren't paying attention to the timer and are still going in. Five seconds, with ten seconds left, you're tied, and they die. The enemy takes the lead, the lead and wins, or you put it in overtime and then you still lose or something because the enemy gets supers. So don't be that blueberry that pushes in. Play the timer. So tip 18, my last tip for you guys. I don't, I didn't record it, but um, if you're in survival and you have more lives than the enemy, you can play the timer. If you have more lives and the timer hits zero, you will win the round. Now, if you're both out of lives or I believe tied with lives, the game will go into overtime and a capture point will spawn. So make sure that beforehand you maybe kind of rotate towards this capture point because you want to be on the point it's better to have that point be capping a little bit for you because it's going to make the enemy play extra aggressive when they're extra aggressive they're usually extra predictable and making them come to you is a little better because you can you can kind of predict when to pop your super or defend it with your super and things like that so that's it for me guardians these are real basic strategies for comp like pretty much textbook but i guess a lot of people don't know or maybe it's a nice little refresher or something or just maybe one of these tips might be that thing you need to help cross that threshold and for you and your team to hit 2100 glory so i hope you enjoyed the video share it with your friends like maybe subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one remember stay thick